Well, I was very fortunate in my own formation as a Brazilian that I was able to spend a year as a seminarian in in M and A, and so I got to know the priests that were alive at that time, and also it gave me a kind of a great interest in the history. And um, I keep coming back to this line about Brazilians being accidental religious, <laughs> but there really was a sense that their reason for being was to teach in the school. They were diocesan priests that were living together and wanted to continue to live together and wanted to continue to teach. And the most reasonable way to do that was with the structures of religious life, common, common exercises, common prayer, a common life. And so on the basis of their sense of a common calling to, to serve the church in the priest in this way, the Brazilian fathers were founded. And it's, a, I mean, the story is so tenuous because there were, if you look at that very first letter of petition that the, that the founders sent to the local bishop, there were only six names on it. A couple of months later, they got up to 10 when they finally found it. So we talk about 10 founders, but they were unsure. They were unsure about what God wanted them to do. They were unsure that this was the way God was calling them to serve, but it happened in God's providence, and here we are. Wasn't there also an element of sensing a need for theological education because in the post-Napoleonic laws, seminaries had been suppressed. So part of the, the effort to band together to teach included meeting a need for religious education in the, in the region, is that not? Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. The church was in a very, very complicated situation in France at the beginning of the 19th century. There was yeah. religious orders had been dispersed, there was all kinds of political conflicts between church and state and small and private ways, uh, religious destruction was happening in quiet, out of the way places, mm -hmm. and that was the Brazilians. If you go to that amazing place in San Sephora in the Man, you can see the valley and the school being kind of built at the end of it, because that way you could see the soldiers coming, and so it was a perfect location to be able to do, in a clandestine way, what was the the beginnings of our religious life. It's, it's very moving to be there. It is. But the thing, thing that, and, you know, and for me as well, is, is almost like the second founding of the Brazilian Fathers, um, for, for us in North America at least, is, is, is the, the sense of the Brazilians um, being invited by a former student to go to Toronto um, and sending, you know, a quarter of, of the priests there because, again, they just knew that this was an important venture to do. Um, and so they send a quarter of the priests over to this place that they're not sure about. And, and I think that that hopefully continues to animate us today. That sense of we're not wedded to one particular place or entity or anything like that, but we hopefully continue to be open today to where that spirit may move us. I always remember the story about one of the four original priests who came from France he didn't want to tell his mother. So he left NMA and got on the boat and then sent a letter back <laughs> to say that he'd gone because he knew he could not face her with the real prospect he would never see her again. He accepted this call to come from the world, but he did it. He's a national.